The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Hi, folks. Basil Chapman. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on this Monday, the 6th of November, and we're looking at the Dow, which is, uh, where did it go? The Dow is down now $2 at 34059 um, As I said in my uh, update for the 10 o'clock Tiger Financial News Network a news uh, commentary, I'm anticipating that this experience extraordinary move from 32,327 to today's high of 34,167. Uh, that's 2,000 points just in a split second. Um, I'm, I'm suspecting that there's some residual buying from people that didn't get in before. And there's some selling because uh, people have had really quick profits. But it's at about 10.20 this morning in about another um, 13 minutes or so. That's where we will start to see whether or not new buyers come in and sustain the move or whether they actually get a turn down that makes a peak uh, A tomorrow. So I said that I'd go through a couple of things that are talking about the longevity of this move. So as I see it, and the more work I did over the weekend, the more I said to my, to, as I'm looking at it and I'm trying to assess, put it like in column A, the positive, column B, the negatives. It seemed to me, as I went through all the different charts of the ones that I, are very important to me, uh, I, I'm looking at it and saying, this is a situation where the speed with which we turned up after the VIX index on Friday, a week ago Friday, was, up at, uh, was high, it was in the 21s, but it wasn't at the 23.08 level of the, well, what date was that? I should put the date in now on the 23rd of October. And it said to me, to get a climactic move that is really sustainable, most of the time, over the years, I'm not talking about a day or two or a month, or I'm talking about decades, we get to see the volatility index either coincide or really closely coincide with a, with a, a significant turn up. So I'm not ignoring it. I am saying that the move that we saw to the upside was, as I looked at the different charts, and as I looked at, say, the SMHs, and I'll just I'll do this quickly before I go to all the different uh, indexes. The SMHs, the semiconductors, look, they were lagging badly going into Friday. The whole the whole week, in fact, was kind of a kind of a lousy week. And as you're looking at the um, low that was made, oh, I forgot to type it in. The low that was made on the Friday, that was a lot of the 31st at, uh, where are we, 136.10. Uh, and we've been short since 159, still short. We have to have, we've taken some profits off. Uh, that would be 10, I think, did I say 31? I think I said 31. All right, so what we're doing is, we're looking at a whole bunch, a cluster, in fact, on the 200 period moving average, after the one, just a beautiful one to one. Look at this. We've almost done a one to one to the upside. The pattern here is this is like textbook. This is one that you can put into the textbooks and say, that's amazing. The angle of descent from the 161.17 all time high on the 31st of, uh, 31st of July came down to 143.35. Look at that angle, number of bars to the upside, then the angle and the number of bars to the, to the upside. It's a downside, now you got upside green. Downside perfectly to the blue, to the Chapman Wave inside, now you've formed the Chapman Wave inside track and a down channel with beautiful parameters sitting here where this is the propellant zone, that's the repellent zone. You go back up green, almost to the tick, to the inside track resistance, and you come down again. I made that light because it was starting to get a little bit uh, difficult to see, to, to the 136.10 level, right in the same angle. That's the beauty about this Chapman Wave technique, where you look at the, um, in this case, the inverted falling X formation, inverted falling X formation, and then you take it out, and you look at the arch that forms, and you come down. Now comes the issue. What's going to happen here? Well, as I see it, this is where we're going to see some resistance. 
And that's telling me because the semiconductors were lagging. Look, they were lagging. What was uh, what was the stake here? Let me just double check. Uh, this uh, okay. Here we go. Right there. On the 31st of October, 31st of I'm oh, sorry, October, 31st of where are we? Yep, October. <laughs> 31st of October was Tuesday. Oh, that's Tuesday. So already on Tuesday, it's stalling. It didn't participate. And then it did participate quite nicely on Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. So it was a catch-up. To me, that, that demonstrated short squeeze, number one. Number two is it also demonstrated new buying. But my guess is that from the, my interpretation there were more. There were more buyers having to cover. Now that's just one area, but this SMHs to me are very important. So I'm watching this very closely. One of the reasons why, instead of going long on Tuesday, since I missed because I did not get that very high VIX on on two on Monday for that big turnaround, the classic turnaround, I still consider that a failure pattern. Just as my own back, the background memory as as to what and and things I've gone through with the VIX index to say it was a low. It might turn out to be the low, but I think that there's some kind of a test, at least um, in the Dow. Let me go to this right now. The Dow trading uh, down eight. But I think this area of the thir uh, 33,500 to 33,200, at some point in the next week or so, I think that gets tested. That's all. That doesn't mean to say we go to that low. And I think that's where I have to make a decision. Do we do we go full bore into the upside for the Dow? We are still long from uh, October. But at the same time, I did miss getting into the new position of the Dow. But I did say on Tuesday in the morning, I said, we're going to use a particular stock. I used Microsoft as a proxy for the diamonds. That was silly. I should have used them both. I should have had the Dow. I, because I always talk about the Dow. And it's no use saying, oh, we've got a proxy that's doing fantastically. <laughs> that's not good enough. Um, but it is. I mean, and that says to me, even, even Microsoft with a spectacular move. Look at this. So we're long from the 338 level. It's trading at three, um, almost at 358. I mean, that, that's a spectacular move in, a, in a, just a, a week, or just over a week. Um, but the target is 366.78 for Microsoft. But the reason why I liked it is it was in that magnificent seven that said the shorting that was going on or the disappointment or the lack of enthusiasm for the magnificent seven had reached a level that I thought, you know, these things could really have a move. Look, Meta had a big move up. Uh, Goog. Had a had a, a decent, not a not a big move up, but a decent move up. Apple, um, that did have a move up, and even now it's moving up a dollar thirty three at one seventy seven ninety seven. But it's it is having a move up, and what am I missing? Netflix. Uh, I don't usually include Netflix, but it should be included because it's in leg C. Big move up, and this is at ninety six percent in the stochastic, and that says it's in a buy mode and it should try to tackle the highs that we made back in September in the 453 level and here it is the 431. I'll be back and now we'll go through all the different I want you to explain my modus operandi, the what I'm thinking, how I'm thinking, and we'll see if that's going to pan. I'll be back. Now. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Tigers. Every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Orr joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. 
In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Hi, folks, we're back. So I said I would go through these different indexes, and I, I, I can't even remember now. But yeah, let me just do that again. So we have Fibonacci, we've gone to 61.8 retracement in the S&P. I usually like to put these up, and then as soon as they don't mean anything to me, I just take them down because I, I, as it is, it looks a little messy to me right here. But I like to keep all the information that we've had. Uh, let me just do this one here. I wanted to just show you something that the last one wasn't at the same angle the last move down in the S&P, the one to one to the downside. This is a Chenway falling axe formation right here. Um, and the arch formation, dreaded H. Uh, but it went to price wise, it went just about to uh, 4118. I'd say, what is that? 41, 4124, 25. And the low was. 4103.78. So um, we got close. And now this is good rally to the upside. And that just it says to me with the two gaps, it doesn't have to fill the gap. There's no there's no rule that there's a time. Usually you fill at least one of the gaps and there's a big two two gap play. Uh, but it doesn't tell you when. It could be immediate, it could take time, it could be a rollover, and eventually it takes it out. How it takes it out is tells you whether or not there's a good chance of filling all, both gaps downside. Let's just go one step at a time and say, hey. This is a fabulous move. The stochastic's only at 68%. The MACD is very strong. The nine period today is crossing positive. That's a good sign. So that says you've got a buy signal, which means that I can put an up arrow. But that stochastic, it doesn't have to, but I prefer that if it can get to 80% before I can call it a buy, a, a buy mode, an upgrade from a buy signal to a buy mode. That's number one. Number two is in the retracement to the upside, there are little icons on the left, whether it's a peak or whether it's a gap or whether it's a moving average. And that just says that the, the level of four, uh, 4393, I believe it is, yes, 4393 on the 17th of October, um, that's kind of your upside. And that's where there should be a lot of resistance. If we just power right through that, there's going to be a spectacular move. At this particular point, um, so far today with the consolidation saying the Dow's up 16, the S&P is up 5, this is very good action because normally in a move like this, you get a give back of the last hour's trading of the previous day, previous session, that is. And and then you start another move either up or you can start to break down. But so far, this is excellent action. Okay. So I wanted to just say that I, I'm not, 
There's a falling exclamation in the weekly chart and means that if the if the S&P at any time in this first part of November starts to trade above 4,400, you have to consider this is really good action. So I'm not saying that um, we have to go down. I'm saying I did a lot of work on this pattern that I talk about, the internal low and the residual low. Everything about the move except for the volatility index on, um, let me just get there. Everything but the volatility index gave signals on Friday, Friday going into Monday's action and then followed through on Tuesday to say this is probably a residual low. And in fact, if it is a residual low, you can see the green nine period moving average in the Dow is turned up. Then it says this whole area right in there, that whole 33,500 to 33,000 um, should be very, very good support. That's the way I'm looking at it right now. And I'm suspecting that this is a move that has some some legs to the upside, some more time than legs to the upside. And then when we roll over and there's a sudden bad news, there's always bad news that knocks the market down, it holds. If it doesn't hold, that's going to be an issue. But that whole 33,000 area, I could do a comparable thing with the S&P and the Qs, et cetera, but I won't. What I am going to say is that in the S&P, the Dow Stochastic is 68. Sorry, the Dow Stochastic was, where was it? 68% yesterday or on Friday. I'm not sure where it is today. But the stochastic is at 68%. And for the first time, you've got an L, meaning that it's flipped to the, the nine period moving average. It's a daily bar. This is uh, looking at it as a daily bar. Have to wait for the close, but so far it's turned positive. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. QQQ, stochastic. Did I type it in the wrong place? Yeah, of course I did. QQQ, there it is. So the QQQs at this particular point okay, um, have a stochastic of 70%. Now, this is getting very interesting because it's getting really close to the 80% level. And here it is just getting uh, repelled at this pink Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. The next level would be right here at about 370.60. And you're at 368.97. So very close to, as soon as it breaks and starts to hold above this green line, it turns this whole area, may give or take a point or two, into key support. And here you are in the falling axe formation in the weekly chart. What is the falling axe formation? Very simply put, it is where the price runs up, usually goes to a D, E, or F, and it starts to make lower highs and lower lows, and then suddenly forms a base and it breaks that trend line. This is the looks like a falling axe, right? There's the there's the axe, there's the blade. If I had to use uh, terms that would endear me to the technical community, I would say it's an ex a falling expanding cone formation. Um, falling axe, I like. And once it breaks that resistance, then it can go one to one in the same uh, degree of angle, same number of bars to the left side high. Okay, so we're looking at this in the uh, weekly chart sitting right there for the first time. Um, in two weeks, you've had a pink nine period moving average for the weekly chart. Now it's flipped to L. The week has just barely begun. We'll have to see where it closes the week, but this is a good sign. It means that um, there's internal strength. And that says, and that, that kind of corresponds to what I was looking at when I said we wanted Microsoft because I thought it, it represented the best that I could analyze, the best of the um, Magnificent Seven. We missed it on the way up and waited and waited and waited, had patience, finally got in. And it's a Dow stock, and it's at the same price just about as the diamonds would have been in the 350 area. Uh, well, it was 338 when we got in. Um, and I, I just, it, it covered a whole bunch of things. Um, we'll see if it works. That's all I can say. Uh, and I used it as a proxy, but that was a mistake. I should have just jumped in to the to the Dow and said, if I'm having a proxy, then I've got to have the original as well. Not a mistake. All right, so the QQQ, IWM is something completely different. The deeper down is down 180 today, 172.69. It's a tough spot for the small caps. Now, I, I want you to show you, look, gold is holding pretty nicely. It's down 8 but it is not breaking to new highs. Yet the GDX, the GDX um, had a very good, strong move on Friday. It's giving back some today, down 21. The GDX is the gold miners. And I've, I've said for years that I always just personally, I like to see gold miners move and then gold follow. I don't want to see gold lead and then 
very often the gold miners just lag. Sometimes they play a little bit of catch up. Well, the catch up is usually in the silver. Well, silver is just standing still. It's under the 200 period moving average at 23.65. Uh, it's trading at 23.15. It's just kind of stuck. Stuck is no good. So as I look at it right here, the 200 period moving average of the weekly chart says that until silver really starts to trade at 24.68, 24.70s, um, it's just kind of stuck. And I'm a little surprised uh, because gold has such a spectacular move. And I suspect that it is, it is, if it's geopolitical, then I don't know if the, the, the actual stock will move. <laughs> if it holds for a long time, obviously those gold stocks will move. Uh, that is up. I was up 26, that's so four. And then I had a question about, what is it, CFLT? A lot of people, I don't know why, a couple of people talking about CFLT. I'll be back with CFLT. Currencies, commodities, and bond markets are as important as ever right now with how they're driving the volatility in equity markets across the globe, which is why it's a great time to try out Teddy Kegstat's Tiger Forex Report. Teddy Kegstat breaks down the Forex markets every Monday using his 30-plus years of experience as a trading veteran of futures, Forex, stocks, and options. Teddy releases his weekly Tiger Forex Report every Monday morning with coverage of all the major currency pairs, including the dollar index, the euro dollar, pound dollar, dollar Swiss, dollar yen as well as many more and he also has weekly coverage of the crude oil market and the 30-year t-bonds as they both influence forex markets tremendously when you sign up for the tiger forex report you also gain instant access to teddy's 60-minute webinar archive he just hosted forex strategies and fundamentals what is behind the tiger forex report for all the details and to start your 30-day tiger forex report subscription today visit the front page of tfnn.com tfnn educating investors you might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com and hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So I don't want to run out of time. So I'm going to just go TLT, which the question gave back a chunk of the gain on Friday. Uh, it's a, a down 78.86.85. The more work I did over the weekend on the whole area of bonds uh, told me that uh, it's not going to be so easy. Uh, you got the U.S. Uh, bonds down a point at 112 and 22.30 seconds. 
I think there's work to be done, but I also think that the law that was established, let me go back to the TLT, most people can get the TLT, the law that was established at 82.42 on the 23rd of October, let me just type that in, because I'm going to use that often, 82. I'd say 43 or 42. Uh, uh, oh, <laughs> shouldn't have been talking at the same time. Uh, we've got on the 23rd. So the 23rd, 82.42. There we go. 10, 23, 23. I think that that is the low for this moment. But I need to see the evidence that says that, oops, that, oh, here we go. Just make it gray. The evidence that says 90 to 91 and a half is an area that wants to be uh, ventured into so that it goes above the weekly 89.96 40 period exponential moving average. And if it's able to do that, in other words, it has to get into the 90 area, a whole bunch of gaps. So we don't have to, it trades overnight. So uh, the gaps are always there. But it needs to show me that the yield, the TBT, mm. whoops, the TBT, which is the inverse of the TLT, that's the short position, uh, that peak F. I want to see if it's able to make an arch formation at 40, it's at 40.21, get into the 41.37 area, then arch over and then come down sharply into the 37s. That's what bonds need. I, that, it's a work in progress. In other words, I'm not, I'm not saying that it's not going to work. I'm saying that I want to see what would happen. Just as I said, I want to see if the VIX index spires into the high 20s, low 30s, for me to get a really serious multi-week, even month, turnaround in the Dow. We didn't get that. So um, that there's the other things that now have to go on to, to manufacture all the things that are missing from that particular very oversold condition and hysterical selling of stocks. It wasn't there. So in this case, it's almost the same with one. So let's get now to F, uh, C, F, L. Oops, I think I wrote that wrong. Yeah, no, I didn't. L, Y. CFLT. I wrote the T like a Y. Yeah, so the question came in. Uh, Basil, is this uh, one of your uh, volume price climax turnarounds? So this is called um, Confluence Inc., a stock that I'd watched go from uh, the 90s, just kept plummeting, and I never, I never followed it at all. But here it is at uh, with a low of 14.69. <clears throat> On the 3rd of November, it had a volume spike. I mean, toodle, toodle, toodle. It keeps going in the volume of 3.2 million, 3, 3, 3 million, 2 million, 3 million. Oh, duh, nothing to see here, folks. On the 2nd of November, that's on Thursday, must be news or whatever it is, it gaps down and it plummets. And the volume, remember, toodle, 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 2, 3 million? 57.6 million. So the question is, is this one of your chap wave volume spike climax reversals? Remember, we saw that with Schwab when it made that round number 45 low. Uh, that was back on the 13th of March, 45 round number low. And I call that a chap wave price volume climax. But the rule of thumb is that it, um, it has to go 28 sessions, 28 sessions and move nicely above the gap up high after the low was made. That's number one. And number two is if it does that, it can go for 58, 56 bars, that's days in this case, and move very much higher. Well, in a sense, it kind of did that a little bit, but then it, it's given it up and it's tested 54s just the other day. It went to, uh, sorry, 40, 40s the other day, went to 40, uh, 48, 66 just three, three, four points off that low from March. It tested that low from March in, uh, back in May at 44.65. So here are my requisites that I look for. They have, they, invariably, there has to be a series of declining lows, gap down lows. That's number one. Mm -hmm. So, oh, and then some, uh, Duncan Steve says, CFLT, for your information, <clears throat> tanked on not good enough news or numbers. 
tanked and numbers delivered a solid Q3 exceeding the high end of total revenue. Total revenue grew 32% to $200 million. Non-GAAP operating uh, margin improved 22 percentage points and non-GAAP EPS turned positive for the first time, a key milestone. Okay, so what I wanted to say in this particular instance is, so my criteria are, number one, is there needs to be a series of just bad news so that when it finally comes down to that low, everybody's just, anyone who wanted to get out just says, I am done, I am, I am, I never want to see this stock. I'm out. And as they go out, it starts to move. It makes a climactic volume price climax low with massive volume. So in this case, it was just a sudden. <clears throat> this is beep, beep. This is uh, Roadrunner. So the rug gets pulled and it just comes down. So this doesn't meet at least a key ingredient for me. Now, wh why am I not getting the other one that I thought of that had the same thing and I spent time on it? I I'll try to find it if I got it in my notes. Um, there was another one that had, uh, was it, it wasn't TLT. I wouldn't have used an index like that, would I have? No, there's, there's, there's another one that, that did move down, but it only had like one bad day and then a gap down and then a gap and then that was it. So, all right. So, so the question is, all right, so then what's the big deal about going, what's going on now? So there was a really good session on Friday, a gap up and it started to not fill the gap. The gap is huge. The gap goes from the 27s uh, to the um, 15, 16. So that's, it's going to take a while. If you look at this peak D at the 200 period moving average in the weekly chart, it came tumbling down and it makes this level right here, the left side low. You've got two bars, maybe three, to close above 16.60, the low of the week of the 6th of January. So just treat it as a dreaded H pattern for at first and see what it does. So the big question is, is this something to get into based on your technique? And I'm going to answer and say it didn't fulfill key requirements. The volume was unbelievable. Anyone who wanted to sell just, I mean, <laughs> that was huge. And it occurred. It has to occur. Oh, I remember now the stock we were looking at. It didn't occur on the day. It was the day before. It has to for this technique, this particular Chapman wave technique to work. It must be the day of the low volume price climax. And that's the bar that has to also move up. So that that is good. But now it's a complete independent thing. So the question really is where would it go? And I'll just say to you, because of, of Friday's action and because today made a slightly higher high, I think this is in play. Hey, give me a second as we go into the break. Dow's up 39, S&P's up 7, and I'll talk about it as soon as we return. A good question. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you ready to take your trading to the next level? Introducing Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, your key to successful active trading. Tom O'Brien, renowned for his expertise in the financial markets, has designed Market Insights to be your daily guide to profitable trades. Tom publishes his daily Market Insights newsletter every market day before the market open, along with updates when warranted. Stay ahead of the game with Tom's real-time analysis and trade recommendations delivered straight to your inbox. Whether you're a seasoned trader or just starting out, Market Insights provides the edge you need to navigate the markets with confidence. Ready to join the ranks of successful traders? Head over to TFNN.com and subscribe to Market Insights today. Don't miss out on this opportunity to supercharge your trading results. 
Market Insights comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee for all new subscribers, so you have nothing to risk. Don't miss out on this opportunity to revolutionize your trading game. Head over to TFNN.com right now to join the thousands of traders who have already experienced the power of Tom O'Brien's award-winning newsletter, Market Insights, firsthand. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi. So uh, let me just get back to this. So the question is, do I buy it or do I sell it or just step aside? To tell you the truth, in terms of looking at my work and uh, just looking at it as objectively as possible, uh, uh, someone in the day, who was that? Was that also, uh, oh, a lot of people commenting there. Uh, I'm going to try to find that. Dude, what happened? Oh, I've got that, I've got that. Oh, there it is. Okay, so uh, we've got CFLT. Oh, FTNT. So, Duncan, Steve, thank you, uh, uh, Steve. Uh, FTNT is the same thing. So, let me go to FTNT. Huge volume. Had a big reversal the same day. Um, 18 million and normally it's nine and five and four million. <coughs> Sneeze. Um, oh, I used to have this Fortinet. I used to have it all notated and everything. I think this is a, is this a cyber security? I'm not sure. I think so. Anyway, this is a little bit different chart because it went right to the 200 period exponential moving average, and that tells you now you've got 49 to 48 as key support on the very short term. Um, yeah, so let me just say, if it doesn't meet all the criteria, then it just doesn't. I, I have to be as objective as possible and say, no, I can't give you a comment based on the Chevron wave uh, volume, price, climax, low. Uh, it doesn't meet all my criteria. So I have to treat it on a completely different plane. And so FCLT, uh, F, uh, CFLT, I'm just going to say that if you want to buy it, I just make absolutely sure that it doesn't take out Friday's low. And the low was 16.92. That's just the way I'm looking at it. You might have to go there and then start a new move up. But I'm just saying that that would be a criteria for me. But the fact that it is going into the gap immediately, I love that. If it goes to the gap and it can hold above the gap, the low bar, low, high, and it can hold above that for three or four bars. It says and that was um, that was an emotional response, and now you're going to get a play, and that just says possibly 1960 to 20.25. That would be an area. Just visually, I'm doing this. That's where it could bounce, and then it probably has to do some retesting. Uh, no one asked me about Fortinet, but I'll just do this to say that it's almost the same thing. But the the green candle is way better. This is where there was seller's regret, remorse. So they got kind of, there were buyers that were waiting to come in. The fact that it made a nominal new high this morning is a good sign. All I'm going to say to you is um, this is a slightly better chart, but it's not great. I mean, to, these gaps don't happen for nothing. If it fills the gap by December, the third week of December, it's filled the gap and it's trading at uh, 59 to 60. That would be fantastic action. He says all of this was just a, an error. It was an error in thinking because it was really on its way up. 
So that's the way I'd look at it. And definitely if it takes out the low on Friday, that is just horrible news. I, at this point, it's trying to hold. Okay, next question came in. Uh, could I look at, uh, where is it? Where did it go? Oh, could I look at ARKK? So ARKK is some, uh, an instrument we've had before. We did very nicely. I haven't been in it for quite a while. And look at this. It had a very, very strong move. It had an alternate count, uh, which said that that F was an F slash B. This is a, a G slash C, and that's a D. Remember, G slash C often on the way up all the way down. Not the G slash B, but the G slash C very often can go to a D. In fact, it's, it's funny because, uh, look, here's the Dow. I'll come back to this in a second. I-N-D-U. What did it do? It made... An E slash B at the low. The diamonds, I think, made an F slash B at the low. The QQQ made a D. The S&P, this is on the daily chart, made a G slash B. And there's your G. And look at that beautiful rally off the G. So G slash B is a little different to G slash C. G slash C says you could probably go down one more to go to a D. G slash B says... Take that a little more seriously. It's the same on the way up. All right. So uh, I just want you to go through that. And, uh, I'll go, and now I'm going to go to uh, ARKK. This is Kathy Wood. It's her. ARKK is the ARK Innovation ETF. Fabulous move from 33. Now, this is someone who talks about the long-term position, the long-term position. Well, a five, six-year plan. Well, this is now... The third year, almost going into the fourth year, well, let's call it, just be kind and say it's two and a half years. From November of 2021, when it was at 125.86, this is a, an instrument that went down to 29. I, I would just say that going from a, a fund, going from, yeah, it's an innovation fund, meaning you're going to buy for the long term. But what if you needed the money sooner than long term? Well, 125 down to um, down to 29. I'd say that's that's problematic. However, it did have a really nice bounce. It went up into the 50 area, pulls back again to the 33s, and now um, it's had a good move up. I like this, uh, but only in a portfolio that says I am prepared to have some, in, rather than grab some of the stocks that are in the ARC, I'd rather grab ARC as a generic, and I'd trade that. So if you're looking to add to a position, if you have it already now, I don't know whether it's adding or just looking at it, I'm, I'm going to take it that is uh, for a new position. Because you're looking out longer term, I would either say you could nibble right here at 39.90. My preference, and this is in the, general, in the market in general, just for the next day or two, I just I need to see what kind of pullback we get and then what kind of rally. So I'm considering that the low that was made Friday was a pretty serious low, that we don't have to go back to it. I think we will come back towards it. I don't think we're going to come back to it at this particular point. But at the same time, ARC is the speculative side of the market that says, um, I, I rally really well, but you better get out. And that's what I'm thinking right here. If you can get this under uh, Friday's low at any point this week, and that would be under uh, uh, 39.10, and it's at 39.94. It's only down 50 cents. But if you can have a little patience and try to get it there, I'd prefer actually if it didn't go under that, but I'm just saying that's one way to look at it, that you can wait for a dip under it and then start a position, and that you might add to on a rally for a leg B, if, because this is still a gray leg A, making it gray, because why? Because the stochastic is at 66%. MACD is very good. And today, the day is young, but it did flip to L in the nine-period exponential moving average over the 14. That could change. That could disappear by the end of the day. So that's what I'm looking at now. For someone who says, you know, as a spe speculative instrument, I think that this is right now is, is a period where the specs might have a little bit more upside room than other times. And if this is only A and we should go to B, what happens sometimes with an A is you get such a strong A – that you don't go very much high to B and then to C and then to D and then you pull back. But if this is an A and you only have a minor pullback and leg B takes you from uh, where we're at 39.93 now into the 42.50s and that's only leg B, 
that's going to be a spectacular movie. So I would just say you could also sprint and grab a bike at 39.94 and then have patience to wait for a dip underneath to add another little bit, all part of the first A, a position. So you could split it or you could start it. Just have patience to start. I'll be back. Dow is uh, up 21. s and is up 5. Basil Chapman, Tiger Technicians out. Tigers, every Tuesday and Thursday, Tim Moore joins the Tom O'Brien Show to share his unique insight that he's developed over decades of trading. Now, on Tuesday, November 7th, from 4 p.m. to 5.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Tim Ord will be hosting his own live webinar. Tim's analysis has been outperforming market returns by almost double, and his gold analysis is on track to be a winner as well. Tim will be delving into six secret ratios that every trader should know. In this webinar, Tim will be covering the daily TLT VIX, the daily and weekly SPY VIX, the American Association of Individual Investors bull bear ratios, and the trend panic levels. Tim will break down each ratio, how it is calculated, its importance, and how it can help you make bigger returns. It's as simple as this. Learn the ratios, trade by them, and see your returns. That's it. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up now. TFNN. Educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Hi, folks. So let, let me just go through a couple of things uh, that I want to look at as we're going into the end of the, uh, the, the session, my session today. Um, we've got, uh, well, of course, Steve Rhodes comes up. And then don't forget, you've also got tomorrow, you've got, um, should be a really, really fine uh, webinar. And uh, you, you've heard, um, you've heard all about it. You've heard um, just, this is a very interesting thing, because within the context of markets, uh, listening to someone in live, going through going through all the different uh, aspects of, uh, how can I put it, uh, going through all the different aspects of the market in terms of what he looks at and what he doesn't do. It was live and Tim Ward did a fabulous job picking out, picking the gold turn and picking the market turn on Friday. So Steve, uh, so uh, you're, you're looking at Tim giving a, a webinar tomorrow. Go to the front page of TFN and check it out. It's really it was it was quite something to hear live. It was it's great to do hear that because that is the evidence of techniques in real time. So check it out. So within the context of what we're looking at here, 
the spectacular move from the low that was made Friday a week ago to fr this past Friday with with some markets making slightly new highs and some just just failing. I, I'm looking at this and saying the buying spree is still there. How we pull back, it'll probably have to be a little bit of a bad news situation. And for the Dow, the whole thing, well, very short term, 33,700 area is going to be very strong support. But I'm thinking over a period of a week or two that we might have to test 33,500, 33,200. And that's going to be the big test for me. But definitely, this is a terrific turnaround. Um, you had a big move to the outside. Oh, I didn't check right now to see what the estimators are doing. Yep, sort of still down, yeah, just unchanged at 149.40. Um, we're going to be watching a lot of things very closely because that was a big turnaround. There is a ton of resistance coming up. I'll be back tomorrow. Have a great day. Check out Mobile Call Daily News. See you 